Welcome to Beyond the Signboard, where you get the opportunity to learn all there is to know about your real estate journey from professionals who are passionate about property. I'm Amy Bennett, your host, and I look forward to providing you with education, inspiration, and a behind the scenes look at the world of real estate. Well, Mrs. Jody Headley Ward, welcome to be on the signboard. Thank you, Amy. Great I, to be here. I am so excited. It has been on my vision board to have you sitting across from me for this podcast uh, since the idea came into my mind. So we're going to have a really exciting conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about our shared journey, uh, our shared passion, obsession for our industry. Um, And then, yeah, we're going to get a little bit deep into a little bit more about your journey, um, very much your passion for the team. We're going to dispel a little bit of myths and misconceptions about our industry. Uh, Yeah, we'll let the audience enjoy. Um, So Jodi, before we get deep into it, uh, I would just love to share a few of your accolades. So I know this is uh, not in your wheelhouse, um, (laughs) but, um, you know, I've worked alongside you for seven years and I've seen you um, win countless awards. Um, Some of them uh, really stand out to me. So you were awarded the Sunshine Coast Corporate Businesswoman of the Year You've won uh, some amazing results in our McGrath network. So in the top 10 females across our whole network uh, and in the um, you were the number one female agent in McGrath for Queensland. So whilst I know that's very much not uh, why you do what you do, I think it's really important to acknowledge that. Uh, and also for me to be really grateful to have uh, such an amazing mentor. Thanks, Amy. My pleasure. Um, So Jodie, before we get into real estate, it's really important for our audience to understand how you got to be here. Um, Would you just be able to share us through your career journey? Yeah, sure. Uh, I didn't start in real estate until my mid-30s, so uh, there was quite a bit of time prior to that. I finished my business degree in New Zealand and pretty much took off straight away to Hong Kong where I ended up uh, producing business conferences, of all things, and most importantly, met my husband, David, who is, as you know, the principal of our uh, offices. So that was an exciting year. And from there, Dave and I lived in the UK for a number of years, and I landed my dream job working in the women's fashion industry. It was actually for a mail order catalogue, which, you know, that really doesn't exist anymore. It's amazing, isn't it, to think. <laughs> With the catalogues, were they were they sent out to people? Did people... How did yeah, that work? Look, there there were. We had a huge call centre um, that sort of fed off twen- around 20 catalogues a year. Yeah. So we had um, the standard uh, women's wear catalogue. It was all sort of Italian fashion. Uh, and when I came on board, they wanted somebody to spearhead the marketing and research side for a plus size uh, sister catalogue. Now, we don't call it plus size now, but at the time it was quite um, – you know, it was quite an advanced sort of concept that they, that they were doing and I was so passionate about it because I'd actually re- done research on um, the fashion industry as part of my thesis at university. So it was, yeah, some great years, really enjoyed um, what I was doing there, uh, photo shoots, still doing photo shoots now. Yeah. It's just at their houses. A lot of transferable um, skills. It, it was, exactly. I was doing a, a lot of copywriting, which obviously we do in real estate, and just really uh, connecting with people and working with a, a large team of around 66 people, and the majority of them were all female. Um, and you look at what we've got today across the two offices, uh, we've got close to 30 uh, team members and all but two of them are females. So. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a funny thing, isn't it? So many people comment um, on that. I guess it's all we've ever known, isn't it? Yeah, it is a, a, a funny thing. But um, So from fashion to real estate, how did you get there? So, look, in between, in between times, I got pregnant with my daughter Lily, uh, went home to New Zealand, had Lily and then Josh, and David and I decided New Zealand was a little chilly to raise our kids, so we made the move over to the Sunshine Coast. Um, and during that time when I became a mum, 
I decided to fulfill one of my other goals, which was to become an author. Uh, I wanted to be a best-selling author. Mm-hmm. That was on my bucket list. And Teach that, right? I, I look, I did, which yeah. was an ex- a really exciting experience. It was three books, all motherhood related, really about the emotional journey of um, being a mum, mm. which at that time was just wasn't written about. There really weren't the books. We have such incredible conversations and books and resources and podcasts around that now, but back in, in my day, yeah. you didn't. It's amazing. So I guess that was, you know, that courageous conversation, perhaps sharing, you know, with other mums, you know, you obviously felt, you know, isolated or, you know, what you, know, you knew that people weren't um, having the support that they needed. So I know with that um, journey, it took you, I, I know the book's been written and published in other languages. Was there a 60 yes. Minutes article? I, yeah, we were... <laughs> We were on 60, the book was on 60 Minutes and then I ended up working with the University of the Sunshine Coast on a on a really large scale motherhood research study, which was, um, yeah, thousands of mums were involved and that was across Australia and New Zealand and the US. So we were on 60 Minutes talking about that. Um, so look, it was a big part of my life at, at that time and you, you sort of think, gosh, how did I get from that to to real estate. But like you say, so many of the skills that I learned, I did a lot of public speaking as part of writing books. It sort of goes hand in hand. And all of all of that, when I did eventually land in real estate with my husband, David, you know, prodding, yes. going, you should do this, you'd be great in real estate. He was um, already in real estate, right? He was, he was. So David started his journey with Bailey's um, real estate group in New Zealand, which he absolutely loved. And they weren't here in Australia when we moved. Um, so uh, but it, was a, it was a fantastic foundation for him. And he had been trying to gently nudge me towards the industry for a long time. And, you know, eventually I I got brave enough, really, was a big thing for me. I was, I was scared of the idea of, you know, something new in this industry and having to negotiate and, and learn everything possible about houses and how they were built and building and pest inspections. I, I just thought, gosh, I don't know that I can do this. Um, but eventually, or in a very short space of time, probably after my first six months, I it just something sort of clicked and I realised that all of the jobs that I'd had prior to real estate, all of the skills and experiences had sort of led me perfectly to an industry that I was just fell absolutely in love with. And it's incredible because I think in addition to all of those skills that you had, um, it's continual learning, isn't it? That's, you know, we just spoke about off air is that, you know, 15 years down the track, there's still, you know, no two homes are the same. Um, you know, it, you're always, every day is a new day, which is, I think, what we both really enjoy and like. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I just never thought there'd be something where I would be challenged and excited and, and this passionate about for such a long period of time. And honestly, you know, it must be at least 15 years now since I started, Amy. And I, every year I'm like, I'm as, I'm as excited as I've ever been. I'm more passionate. There's something else to learn every day. Um, you, you never stop learning. And like you say, it is new homes, but probably even more importantly, it's, it's different people. Mm. And for me, and I know it's the same for you, uh, uh, you know, when, when you're selling, it's, it's the journey with people, taking them from A to B, trying to help them get there in the smoothest, mm. most stress-free way. And I guess feeling like you're really making a difference in someone's life. There's just no better feeling on earth than that. I think, yeah, we were both probably destined to be able to be those people to help people guide through. And and I know you say stress-free, which is often difficult, but we like the term stress-less, don't we? And and really helping. We try our best. Um, So we've got got you into real estate. Uh, You're um, now a principal of seven years here, Uh, nearly actually Actually, eight. Yeah, we just celebrated eight eight years with McGraw, which is seven Seven years with me me here. Mm -hmm. So um, what 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 was your inspiration to join the McGrath uh, business? Well, great question because um, you know, we, we mentioned manifesting off air earlier and honestly it started probably 20 years ago when Dave and I were back in New Zealand and 
Dave found the book of John McGraw wrote, You Inc. Yes. said, you've got to read this. I love books. I love anything, you know, p- personal development. And we devoured John's book. We just both clicked and resonated with it. And one day David announced to me, we will be working with this man in our future. And that was it. We we just both sort of knew that it was an inevitable and there was no McGrath in New Zealand at that time, but we just kept, you know, working on what we were doing. We moved to the Sunshine Coast. Uh, eventually, after we'd been here for some time, McGrath came to the Sunshine Coast. And then when the stars aligned, Dave picked up the phone and before I knew it, we were down at John McGrath's um, office with his team high-fiving and going, right, when do we open this office? And incredible. We uh, never look back. Absolutely incredible. It's it, John's a very special person mm-hmm. um, to all of us and, and you know, has been doing incredible things since 1988. Mm-hmm. You were able to obtain him as a guest for um, an event that I um, – attended and hosted actually and it was a real game changer for me and I think that's probably a real commonality is that shared values um, you know the, those things are really felt um, not just with our team but across the whole business which is really exciting and, and and very much where both of us feel destined to be which is exciting you mentioned there too that you'd both read the book uh, a book's a big part of your journey I, I know you've written um, some but also reading books huge part of my journey and I can't imagine that ever stopping. So yes, we've got a library here at the office for everybody to, you know, just come and dip in and dip out and and get whatever it might be that they need at that time. So yeah, books uh, are, are you know, incredible and, and podcasts and I just believe in topping up your tank every single day with as much positivity and inspiration as you can, because in our industry, there are challenges, there are tough days and, um, you know, in everybody's life that that is life. And you, I just try to balance that out with um, as, as much good stuff that makes you feel good. So yeah. I think that's been something that I've really learned from you is also how much uh, reading and um, absorbing personal uh, stories, books, everything, how that has such a big impact in our careers as well. Um, so thank you for that mm-hmm. gift. Um, like you said, we've got lots of uh, books in the library here and sometimes you read the same book over and mm. over, is that right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you just have to trust your your instincts and your intuition. Sometimes you just drawn to something. I'm rereading Atomic Habits, for example, at the moment, uh, which is just such an inspirational book and then practical as well. So, um, you know, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, a total classic. You could read that probably a million times. You'll you'll pick something um, incredible up every time you do. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm always inspired every week when we have our weekly sales meeting, there's always an inspirational quote, um, something that always really resonates with um, with the team and also um, some good food for thought for us. Um, Jody. we're going to um, delve into uh, a really special um, program that we have here at McGrath, which is our Community Give Back program. Uh, that's that's been part of your whole journey um, with McGrath and something that we're both super passionate about. Um, I'd love you to share just a little bit of an insight into the program and maybe a special memory. Sure. Well, Amy, honestly, when I think about our Community Give Back program, like without doubt, you are the shining star that you, you've been with Dave and I since the inception and the beginning of that program. We all shared the same values at the beginning. And I think, you know, as our teams grow and we still share those values now that in order to operate in business in this day and age, you have to be an incredible contributor to your community. I just, you know, I just think I'd rather close the doors than do it any other way. Like we have to, we have to be a a role model and we have to inspire and create a ripple effect um, that hopefully other people will pick up on. So, yes, our community give back is something that was there from the very beginning. And one of the best memories that I have is when we celebrated our one hundred thousand dollar milestone. Huge uh, it was huge. We had a much smaller team at the time. Amy, you organised the you know uh, the most beautiful event. We had the founder of Orange Sky Laundry jo- uh, join us, who was one of our key. 
uh, charities that we were dealing with at that time, along with, gosh, probably 100 plus other charities in our local area. Um, but we, yeah, we had we had speeches, we had contributions, we had tears, we had emotions, we had Channel 7, I yeah, think. Yeah, cupcakes, I think, every uh, everything. It was yeah, really special. Us. Yeah, we, we just spoke as well about how that program also brought other charities together, which was really special and probably yes. unexpected. Yes. Um, one thing I um, I think is really special is that for everybody's birthday, you allow the team members to choose an organisation to receive a community give back donation. So um, that's really special, isn't it? To get a bit of an insight into the team's yes. passions and hobbies outside of work. Yes. And, you, you know, just getting back to Orange Sky is one example. So we have one of our sales team is deeply involved on a personal level in that and another team member is involved in a, a charity that, you know, helps with the, our homeless or those sleeping rough at nights in our local community. Uh, so it, it extends way beyond the monetary contribution. Yeah. I, I honestly think giving money if you have it is is actually quite easy. It's but it's so much more. We've been educating our community. We've been sharing um, the vision of our different charities to our whole community, sharing whatever needs they may have at the time. We'll send that out and just trying to act as a conduit, I, I guess, in a channel for for great things to flow. Yeah, and I think it's probably something that just comes naturally to us. So I think that was just something we wanted to sort of highlight because we, um, you know, provide our office space to community groups and know the team does things like wishlist giving day or a gift wrapping. Um, so we, yeah, it's, it's really in our DNA is to give back. And I think that's probably a really unique point of difference. It, it's just second nature for us, but it's really nice for us to be able to share a little bit more about that. Yeah. And it, look, it, it just fuels our culture, doesn't it, here in the office? And it's also, you know, from a recruitment perspective, it makes it really easy to just get the right people to join us and on our team because either they have those aligned values and they have a true desire to to give mm. and to make a difference and make an impact or or they don't. So it's sort of an in or out for us because there's not one person that works within our team that doesn't have a huge heart and genuinely care about the people we serve. Yeah, I think that's such a magic um I guess it's a, it's it's probably a, a, a I guess an aura or an energy that people often comment on when they are in the office or they meet the team. Uh, we we are really lucky, um, and that's why I wanted to take that extra bit of time. Um, what I'd love you to share, um, you know, real estate's a very interesting industry. Um, there's lots of myths and misconceptions, but I just wanted to ask what you would say is probably the number one that you have come across. Sure. Look, I think that's an easy one for me, and, and it's actually, speaking of easy, it's that people think it's easy what we do in our industry, that, you know, we get to drive a nice car and, you know, wear nice clothes and zip around and, and open the door at, at properties and suddenly there's a sold sticker. And what I love about your podcast and what you're doing, Amy, is you are, you know, really taking a look behind the scenes mm. And shining a light on the incredible group of people, the network that that we have around us, to to you know make it all possible because you can't do it on your own. Absolutely, as an agent. you need incredible people, whether that's building and pest inspectors, mortgage uh, brokers, uh, and 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 your team, um, lawyers, you know, conveyances, just people in your corner that yes. are going to help your clients and get you to where you need to be. So. I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of um, agents that maybe don't take it to the level that we do in terms of how much we deliver and we give. That's fine. But in order to be exceptional yes. in our industry, there is a myriad of skills and, you know, uh, strategies and, and, and a work ethic that you need um, to really make it and become exceptional in our industry. Absolutely. And I think that's something that we are always uh, identifying and, and refining and, and looking out. So what would you say to somebody that's potentially thinking about real estate? It'd be awesome if there was anyone uh, that's listening in or, or watching. Um, just give them a bit of an insight into, uh, you know, I guess what you're looking for in team members, but also, I guess, a bit of an insight into the reality of real estate. Sure. Look, I, I do meet with people almost every day who want to get into our industry 
and want to have a catch up and coffee. And I and I love to do that because I I love to just have really honest chats with them and see if if perhaps it is a fit for them, and to direct them on that path. I I think I I would recommend um, first and foremost that they get their qualifications, that yeah. they get their salesperson certificate, mm-hmm. and they find out. Are they enjoying that for a for a starting point? Because you really do need that in order to be of value to any office in our industry now. And secondly, uh, for anyone wanting to be a sales agent, I would encourage them to f- um, get a foot in the door. Just yes. whether that's you know a front reception or um, you know an assistant, uh, an administration. Any, anything they can do, like get a foot in the door because you'll, you'll get a feel for the pace, for the energy, for what we do. And it'll either be a yes or a no uh, because it's quite a unique industry. Um, and from there, ideally to get um, the best start, I would say try to work for a, for a team, for a great agent and learn from them and contribute as much as you can and then step off, obviously, from that point would would put you in a really good place for long-term success. Amazing. So, such incredible advice. And I think as well, there's just so many different roles, isn't there, within the industry and even within an office and, um, you know, various different skill sets and everything like that. I mean, certainly my journey has been um, three different roles within mm-hmm. the business. And I think that's really wonderful. So ultimately it gives you a taste, but you also get to learn from other people as well. Um, and and certainly, you know, hone your unique skill set and, and really, you know, obviously that first listing presentation or or, um, you know, first listing is pretty daunting. So if you've got that skill set, knowledge and confidence, all of those things really help. Yeah. So Jody, I'm really curious, um, real estate's obviously been in your DNA in, in the last 15 years, but if you weren't a real estate professional, what would you be doing? The two things that spring to mind, writing, I still, you know, there may be another book in me yet. Um, that is definitely a passion. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'd be painting Amy, yeah. and just trying my hand at at art, which is completely random, I know, compared to real estate. But when I first met my husband one night um, out in Hong Kong and he asked me what I wanted to do with my life, I remember saying to him, I just want to paint and make babies. Wow. Well, <laughs> well you've done one of those. I are, made the babies. Are you, um, are you painting? Do you do that as a hobby? Look, the last um, attempt at painting that I've done was a paint and sip class with the property management team. Awesome. And I had an absolute ball and it did make me realise I need to get those paintbrushes out. Good. It's been too long. I think it's a really, I mean, my um, grandma was a prolific artist and she would always say, you know, it's it's important to have those creative outlets uh, to stop and smell the roses and to enjoy. Um, What kind of medium would you use or what would would you like to paint? I think I'd like to do large scale oils um, and just, yeah, colourful, abstract and just, yeah, just sort of hit that canvas with whatever I've got. Amazing. I love that. And the book, do you do you have a sort of ambition of what the next book looks like? Look, I think I've got about 10 real estate inspired books in me. I um, think gosh, so. We, we, we certainly, um, we see it all, we experience it all and we have some incredible um yeah, uh, encounters along the journey, don't we? But the stories we could the tell. The stories we could tell. Absolutely. So look, we'll, 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 time will tell. Perfect. Look, amazing to have those creative um, outlets. Uh, we will just shift gears a little bit. I'd, I'd love um, to give a little bit of an insight into Jody outside of the real estate world. What would be your dream holiday destination? Well, I am ticking one off my bucket list in a couple of months. So okay. I've been wanting to go to Uluru and I'm off on a week-long hiking trip with five girlfriends and I'm super excited, a little scared. I, I've not done anything like that before, but I just I love nature and I just think it's going to be a really sacred, special holiday. Amazing. So I um, I did joke and say to you before, will you have your like bee suit or the, the fly proof yes. hat I think you need to have yeah, and all of apparently. the gear? Yeah. I'll, I'll have all the gear. I'm, I'm not organised yet, but 
I've got time. That'll be amazing. And um, Uluru, they've got some beautiful, um, you, you can do the, is it the dining under the stars mm-hmm. and all of yes, those special I am, things? I am on my final night. So. Beautiful. So five days of hiking? I think it was six days of hiking and then, yeah, we'll have our final night of dining under the stars and just be a magical way to end the trip. Beautiful. That sounds like a really inspirational goal. Uh, We both have um, spoken over the years about having those goals to look forward to, holidays, things to um, keep us centred. What we were just talking about there at Uluru, what what kind of um, food and drink do you enjoy? I'm I'm always intrigued by somebody's favourite meal. Well, this may or may not surprise you, (laughs) but... (laughs) But of all the things that, that spring to mind, I just cannot walk past a sausage. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Bunning sausage or gourmet. Oh, love them. I love a gourmet sausage, a Bunning sausage. Even I had a few years as a vegetarian yeah. as a teenager and that was the hardest thing that I had to give up at that time. Yeah. Love a sausage and love a glass of bubbles. Perfect. So. Well, I think Uluru will definitely have the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the sausage, maybe something a bit more fancy. Um, Jody, I um, before we move to our final question, I mm-hmm. it would be remiss of me not to ask. I really wanted to delve into um, your leadership skills and really who you are as a person. I know that uh, what you do is a, is a really strong passion. We've we've you know, journeyed through your career, um, there's been a lot of inspirational moments. You've been really led and uh, really clear with what you wanted to do, but there's been a common theme really there. I, I guess probably you, you've you moved to where you are now. You've manifested this component, really empowering women, supporting, leading, maybe, you know, being at the forefront. That's really what I've always picked up. Um, you're not afraid to, you know, stand, even if it means standing alone, um, but very much inspiring other women. But what, what do you enjoy about leading a team? Look, the greatest joy that I now get after, you know, many years of, of selling and building a team is just seeing how real estate can change people's lives. And I, I am particularly um, excited about empowering women in our industry because I think it's just a fabulous mm. industry for women to have families, flexibility. Uh, and, you know, as you know, we have so many women that are either pregnant or they've you know got families or they're grandmas or they're going to have families. Yeah. And, and I love uh, embracing that and helping them on that journey of balancing career and motherhood. Mm. And I also love having conversations with the women on our team about empowering them around conversations of money yeah, and wealth and just finance and being able to talk really confidently, calmly and, um, yeah, and, and intelligently. We're all upskilling in all those ways as a team. Um, we talk about it a lot, but just having being able to talk um, – about money, mm. career, um, ambition, the, the future, and realising that the only glass ceiling that exists in our industry, I believe, is in our own mind. Absolutely. It's an, in, it's an inner glass ceiling because in reality we are a, a phenomenal example of an industry where you can rise as big as your dreams will allow you. And absolutely. I, I just There's absolute magic in that. And I think that's something that, you know, it's a gift to share, isn't it? And I think that's probably a, a lot of the ethos of the podcast as well is to is to share that, yeah, absolutely, it's a, it's a hard, you know, hard industry to crack. It's a hard industry um, every day to show up and be our bright, bubbly selves. But I think what is possible, I think that's a really great uh, topic is, is that, you know, being able to balance it all, um, you know, I, I'm a have fur babies. Um, so I, you know, it's hard sometimes for me to understand, you know, that, that, you know, juggling. And, and I think that's a, probably a really difficult thing that a lot of women feel that pressure to be everything to everybody. Um, you have two amazing, I would say, children, not children now, young adults. Young adults. Yeah. Yes. Um, what, what was the kids uh, take on your um, career? I know both you and Dave are in the industry. So um, I know that that's, you know, really hard sometimes to balance both. But what was the kids sort of experience? Look, I, I, I spoke to the ch- 
the kids, the children, I know, when they I, were little, a lot when they were younger because they were primary school age or you know even younger when I started, and there were there were things that I missed. There were you know school concerts and there were birthday parties or sporting things on Saturdays, and I was doing open homes. Um, so it, it was really important to me that I let them know where, what I was doing and why I was doing it and that it was because mum wanted to help, you know, create a great life for, for us all and to allow them to have opportunities that we might not have been able to if I you know, hadn't chosen this particular career. So I, I guess you never know until they get to the age as they are now, they're yeah. you know, late teens and, you know, starting to leave home. It's only now that I see did you know, was that a good strategy or not? But um, my daughter Lily is now working within McGrath Amazing. and aspiring to be, you know, a sales associate on a great team and then a sales agent in her own right one day. Um, which has been uh, amazing for me because I, I didn't expect that. Um, but she, I guess she saw that no matter how busy I may have been and there may have been other mums that were, were home more mm-hmm. often and at the school events more than me, I yeah. think – I think both Lily and Josh have said to me that what came across to them was I, whenever I came home, I was happy. Yeah, amazing. I, I was I was excited about yes. my day. Yeah. I was, you know, I was upbeat. I wasn't dragging myself around, exhausted, going to a job that I didn't love. What a great, what a great, you know, learning now for them to be able to articulate that and say mm. that. So I think whatever you do in life, it's I, I guess the aim of the game is do something that you love and Absolutely. do it and do it with passion, and you look you, you know you you'll always be a good role model to your your children or your fur babies. <laughs> yeah, and I, th- I think that's probably a good thing that we you know uh, I think we really share that value. Um, I know you know we, we both sort of joke you know there's so many you know nights that we're both in our car you know our little mobile offices you know parked down the street and you know a beautiful understanding husbands both of us um, you know waiting with dinner that's getting you know colder and colder. Um, but yeah, having that support's really important, isn't it? And and I think also that's, you know, probably something that I value most, um, especially moving into sales is having your support. You know, there's never a moment where I can't reach out. And I think being able to offer that to a team member is such an incredible gift. Obviously, the children or young adults um, feel that as well. Um, so let's wrap up with a nice sort of warm and fuzzy ending, because I know this is probably the uh, the question that we could talk about forever. But what is your favourite quote or saying? Gosh, and I had to, I had two to share with you. I thought you'd have ten. <laughs> well, no, I've got a million, yeah. but I had two top ones, and one of them's completely escaped me. But as you know, I I ch- basically change my uh, wallpaper on my phone yeah. <laughs> every day with a new quote, depending yeah. on what I'm feeling and what I'm needing and what 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 I've just found. Um, but just I guess something that grounds me and that I try to share with the team more when I'm you know mentoring and and assisting the team is just a simple one is better today than we were yesterday. Absolutely. Just small incremental changes. Don't get overwhelmed by all the things we could be doing and I should have done this and oh my goodness, I I forgot to do that. It's just are we a little bit better today than we were yesterday? Are we are we bringing more this week than we were last week? And I just feel like if you're moving in that positive trajectory yes. and you're striving, um, then you, you simply can't go wrong. And Absolutely. I've, and I've just remembered it. Good. The, the, um, the last one that I, I know you hear me say all the time, but if you have a bad day and just things are getting on top of you, and I certainly have those like everybody else, I just ground myself by waking up and just going, how can I be of service today. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, let go of all expectations, let go of outcomes, let go of results and just show up with an attitude of what can I do for that someone else today? How can I be of service? And and with no expectation of anything in return. And I just feel like suddenly something shifts and the magic starts to happen again. Yeah, it's it's an incredible, um, I guess, mantra to live in life. Um, and and we, you know, one that we very much share is just being of service. And I think, you know, that that's very much at the heart of what our industry is, really listening to our clients. What is it that they need us to do? being able to do that. And again, um, just e- extending and opening our heart. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that need that. Um, you know, we, we're certainly working with people at a really vulnerable time. 
I think that's probably a, a, another misconception, isn't it, that selling a home is such a glamorous mm-hmm. experience and it's, um, you know, it's fluffing cushions and, um, you know, all, all of that jazz. But very much, you know, there's generally a motivating factor that's not, that's not you know, not often um, a good thing. So mm-hmm. I think that's something that, you know, we, we very much come in, you know, whether it be um, various hats that we wear, um, but very much just, um, you know, I guess, taking control of the um, situation, helping people steering the ship you know it's very much a captain's role isn't it mm-hmm. how do we get to the destination um and as i said as stressless as possible mm. yeah beautifully said beautiful well jody we could talk forever <laughs> yes, um i sure. i know there was so many topics there that i was itching to get a little <laughs> bit um deeper in and i'm hoping to have you back uh in the future on the podcast um but from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for being a part um it's you know very brave and courageous to jump on um but that is absolutely the heart and soul of who you are Well, thank you for being you and what you're doing here, sharing with the world what goes on behind the scenes. And like I said, you are absolutely just the beacon of light. And when I think of, you know, the best of what we do, that being of service, that community give back that we've done so well for so many years, I I see your face shining back at me. So thank you, Amy. Thanks, Jodie. Welcome to Beyond the Signboard, where you get the opportunity to learn all there is to know about your real estate journey from professionals who are passionate about property. I'm Amy Bennett, your host, and I look forward to providing you with education, inspiration, and a behind-the-scenes look at the world of real estate.